Good morning, buenos dias. We are at the second conference of the ECOS Lab. We are in Sierra Spuña, in the Hotel Jardines de la Santa, and I'm surrounded by musicians uh, with the, that have participated on this ECOS Labs and ECOS Residences. Thank you for, for being here. We have four ensembles, Ibera Auri, Dele Donne Consort, Liturina Ensemble, and Trio Aido. And on the other part, on the other side of the screen, we have three promoters today. Um, we are with Albert Edelman from Concert Gebau Bruges, with Tama Blüchemann from the festival Wonderfell, and from Pit and with Peter Pontvik from the Estocolm Early Music Festival. Buenos dias, Albert, Tama, and Peter. We are going to talk today with the young musicians. To the young musicians, uh, we are going to talk about the challenges of the 21st century, and we are concentrating on the sustainability. Yesterday, we talked about the demographical challenge, and we are very happy of the of the conference. Yesterday, we had a lot of nice ideas, and it was a very, very nice, good opportunity for the ensembles to, to learn and to listen uh, how what what are the concerns from uh, from the promoters? What can they do um, uh, with their tools, with their early music? What can they do to, to to help and to have a social impact with their music and their proposals? And also, can, how can they approach? Uh, how do the promoters think? What are they con their concerns? And how can we at the end work together? to to have a, a common project for for Europe and the rest of the world on these challenges. So for that we we are here today and I'm hope that you you will enjoy this conference. Um we have to thank I have to thank to to the team also the the cameras and the and all the ecos staff and also to the University of Murcia and to the Mancomunidad Turística de Sierra Espuña for making pro, uh, possible that we meet here today uh, and all this week in this environment. I would love to to listen to what the what the promoters have to say about today's theme, sustainability. What sustainable sustainable measures can festivals, institutions, and emerging groups adapt to participate from our sphere of action in the fight against climate change? So I will use alphabetic order. So we will uh, listen first to Albert Edelman. Albert, buenos dias. Hi, Jorge. Very nice to uh, to talk to you today. I don't have a clock on, even though I'm on my phone, I don't have a clock here. So you have to wave when I uh, hit my target. But one thing uh, that is, uh, I think, very complicated about sustainability, and you link it to the... Um, the environmental challenges, what does it actually mean? Because what it means for me also is a sort of social sustainability. There is a sustainability towards what you can do as an ensemble. Are you doing too many different projects? Is that sustainable? Is also a meaning of that, of that same word. But I think from the um, organizer's point of view, especially also from my history at uh, REMA, we thought about what a sustainable world looks like and that is one where the ensembles and the organizers are more partners than they were than they are um one thing i always think is um the ensembles know what they're doing ideally uh the organizers have their ideas they have their uh point of view but they're not the boss of the ensemble in a way um so in order for ensembles to do um for instance, longer tours, which I think is a, a thing we want, closer concerts together, um, make it into a nice little package, work uh, socially, make it work also with your family. Um, maybe an organizer needs to say, I'm going to take this program. I didn't really think about it before, but I'm going to take it because my neighbor has it. And that is a way of thinking, I think, for the organizers where we step down a little bit from our high horse, uh, step a bit down from our pedestal, uh, saying, I need to have these, my great ideas realized and work more with the ensembles on 
what can we offer? What can we offer together? What can we offer with other festivals? What do we do with exclusivity, for instance? Can we um, be less strict about that? And I think that's already changing. I think we're seeing that um, it's not always a problem when a, a concert hall one hour away does the same concert. It's, it's fine. The audiences don't necessarily eat into each other. And I think that make, will make it easier for one project to move to uh, to do five concerts instead of just one uh, and spend those three, four days rehearsal um, actually in, in a useful way. So you spend the three, four days and then you play it a number of times, making you better, making the audience more engaged because you know the movie better um, and basically making organizers amongst each other better colleagues as well. So that for me is sort of a change in the, in the environment we should work towards. Um, be more open and um, be more connected and just talk to each other and realize as ensembles that the organizers need you as well. Uh, we're not your boss. We just hire you, but we're not your actual boss. Um, so for young ensembles, maybe that's a that's an advice I can give. Thank you, Albert. That was very, very interesting. We are already writing all the advices I, I see here. Uh, we will listen now to Peter. Uh, Peter, what can institutions do uh, to to help uh, uh, for the sustainability challenges? Well, uh, I, I would like to to focus a little bit on on the let's say the philosophical and the semantic uh, aspects of of sustainability because what that means, uh, as as Albert said before, what it really means because I'm sure we have different opinions, different images about what, what that imp uh, is implying, the, 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 the term, the concept itself of sustainability. So uh, it's, it's really the ability to sustain something and uh, so sustain what? Um, of course, the, the first reaction is we, we need to, to find something, uh, a joint uh, um, vision for the whole planet, for the future, for the climate. But uh, what that means for us, as uh, musicians, as arrangers, uh, I think we, we are sharing this responsibility with uh, 7.5 uh, billion people in, on the planet. So this is not, not a, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a big challenge, but what is the specific aspect of musicians and music in this, uh, in this area? Um, I mean, early music is... Uh, is a sustainable uh, phenomenon, I would say. Music is it is, but especially early music. Why? Because you, we are performing acoustically. We are not using electrical power in order to to reproduce the sounds. Um, we have composers as Monteverdi. It's very organic. The the Green Mountains and Bach, the Brook. So we are in nature when we are when we are uh, um, performing. And um, musicians traveled a lot uh, in, in ancient times, and they still do, because uh, you need uh, a stimuli, uh, the people want live experiences. We have, we have the, the, the period of the, of, the, um, of the COVID now behind us, and, and we know exactly what we were, uh, what we were uh, missing during this time. So... And I, I would also say uh, I mean, the early music sector is really a very, very little part of the whole thing. So uh, we should not uh, put uh, ourselves to, uh, in, in, a, in a position as uh, scapegoats or, or something like this, you, um, but uh, rather think in which way early music can be a factor of sustainability itself, the music, how we can, it could be a flag or for showing our, our audience, people in general, do this music because it's really sustainable. And um, uh, then, then of course, there are a, a few things you can do practically. Uh, you can uh, as also Albert told a little bit to have a better communication between uh, between the, the rangers and, and the, the ensembles. Uh, you can uh, eat vegetarian food. I'm vegetarian myself. 
uh, you can uh, choose uh, better transport train you can uh, interacting uh, interact with with uh, between uh, the arrangers and the, the the ensembles and the audience in a more conscious way um, in fact we we are have a really uh, already um, uh, an example a practical example of this uh, within Nordem, Nordem is the, the Nordic Baltic, um, is the, the, the little sister of Rema, we would say. Uh, it's a, a network for, for arrangers and, and institutions working with early music. And we start now next year the sister festival systems. That, mean, that means bilateral cooperations between festivals, international ones. Uh, so let's say Norway, Sweden, Dan, uh, Denmark, Finland. Etc. Etc. Uh, so uh, this is a very clear way to to do things, uh, to to have a communication, and and uh, and not to not to lose this fantastic possibility to tour, to to come coming to each other, and to present new uh, musical projects and ideas. Thank you, Peter. I'm sure Albert and Tama once has a lot to say from what you said, also you from from Albert. But before respond, respond before we respond uh, each, each other, let's listen for Tama Brücheman and her presentation. Well, thank you very much, and I obviously agree to Albert and Peter um, about uh, the what sustainability means for me uh, to be future proof. And um, I, I really like to talk about ecological sustainability. I think um, we have a lot to exchange about uh, practical things, about reuse, refuse, uh, repair, refurbish, um, all the R's we, we know, recycle, recover. Um, uh, we, can, we can exchange about this and we very well know what to do. Um, uh, reduce and um, stop the uh, the footprint, the carbon footprint we have on on the world to to uh, to have a future for for ourselves and our children. Um, but I, I'm also interested in in um, uh, sustainability, the future proofness uh, in the way to how we relate to our time and resonate with it and. Um, I was thinking of a, a quote by uh, John Adams, the composer John Adams, uh, when he was awarded the Erasmus Prize in the Netherlands, which is the, the most pre prestigious prize in the Netherlands. Um, and, and during that ceremony, he said, and I quote him, uh, in a and this was 2019, and, and we all know it, it only got worse. Um, in a period of social upheaval like what we are currently experience, experiencing, one that is restless and unstable both politically and culturally, many artists feel impelled to turn their activity outward, to take a stand and to use whatever communicative powers they possess to address the crucial issues that affect us all. One might imagine that because the current mood, not only in the United States, but here in Europe as well, is taking such a conser conservative turn, fearful of change and determined to preserve the status quo. So must artists feel compelled to respond by using the communicative power of art to address just those issues, whether they be social or environmental, that they feel government is ignoring. So what he actually says is we need to take a stand and, and use our communicative powers and be relevant. And I think uh, relevance is uh, very important to, to be future proof. Um, and, and I was also, I have a few questions also about this because, um, well, how how do uh, for also for festival organizers? How do we know what is what is, how to be relevant? And um, in in this, uh, our artistic antennas are key. But um, are they always attuned to the present time? And is one antenna so one artistic director per festival? Is that is that uh, enough? Um, shouldn't there be a, a team or of artistic directors? How do you, how do all the how, how can you have an antenna that picks up everything that 
all the issues in our uh, society. So I'm I'm questioning is is one artistic director programming an, an entire festival? Is is that the way forward? Um, and also a question of who is actually at the table? Um, how to to be more? Um, uh, how, how to diversify? Um, I have a question about that too. Uh, do we need a quota to achieve more equality on and off stage, uh, also in the organization, but also on stage? Um, and um, and I'm I'm just thinking: do we do we need, if we want to be future proof, uh, more younger people in our artistic team? Uh, shouldn't we all have someone under under 25 in our team um, to know uh, what is uh, what 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 they are? Uh, thinking what they are doing, what they want to um, uh, have on stage and perform. So I have a lot of qu questions also for you. Thanks. Thanks to you, uh, Tama. It was really, really interesting to listen to you. And as you said, a lot of questions. I'm sure the ensembles here are looking forward to answer them. But first, let's give the voice again, the microphone to Albert Edelman. Yeah, I think the idea of, um, of working with the team in general um, makes your work better. Um, to me, it seems very important to uh, to yeah to always work on things with with more people have more eyes on it, uh, be they really in your team or um, sustainably uh, outside, shall we say? So I would um, it's just a very brief point. It's it's for me very inspiring to work with people in an artistic team actually and um, bring what we can to the table and then make something useful out of it and um, have people talk about it too. Of course, not every festival is built that way. Um, like Peter uh, is an example of a festival that was started by a person and a group grew around it. Uh, there's an artist director and it's a small team, so I guess that's uh, the way it, it should be. And you'll you'll say how how uh, collectively you you plan things. But I think that is something of maybe of the past. Um, not saying it should disappear immediately, but I think there will be more collectivity in um, in our cultural sphere. Uh, our concert halls will be run by uh, more diverse teams. Um, our festivals uh, will also be more listening more to what is happening in society. We'll maybe present things in a different way or just absolutely different things. Um, the, the change is, is waiting for us because there are so many people who are ready to do this job, uh, but who are not yet asked to join the table. So uh, it's really up to us and realize in our heart, like, okay, what can I actually bring? Does it make sense for me to program the same ensembles that I know sell well? Or do I just ask someone completely different? Like, okay, but you don't come too often, but I see you in this sphere you're in this world too what would you program and see what happens then i think it's a very exciting possibility and what the ensembles have to do with that of course is a different question <laughs> but i like the i like the idea of, of opening it up somewhat radically because opening it up slightly has not worked for the past 15 years so um revolution uh revolution peter uh yes revolution is great always <laughs> Uh, I mean, we, we made revolution during all these years by by telling the the, the audience that that uh, early music is something uh, to 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 count on, uh, and and educating uh, people to 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 listening to to our cultural heritage, the sounding one. Uh, but but. Um, I think uh, th this uh, this dialogue that you are uh, speaking about, Albert. Uh, I mean, we have already platforms. Uh, as uh, I'm thinking, uh, uh, to Rema, of course. I mean, Rema in the in the shape uh, that it is um, <clears throat> developing at this moment. As in you you started it yourself, the the the, the opening of Rema. So uh, we have representatives from, from the different sectors in the, in the field of early music. So we, we have the best possibilities to discuss and the, to, uh, the, the theme and to, to find uh, rev revolutionary uh, ideas to, to, uh, to use and, and to, to implement. Uh, so 
So I, I think we 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 are already doing these things, but it's good that we, we speak about that because the uh, back to sustainability, the 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 idea is to to show our contemporaries what the the the, the spirit of what we are doing, but also transmitting, uh, let's say, the pleasure of, the, of of it of the essence of early music performing. Uh, and the knowledge to the next, the coming generations, and 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 this way we are discussing the way how to how to to help uh, the um, uh, how how to manage that, uh, and um, and then all these aspects of social and diverse uh, social uh, uh, commitments and 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 um, diversity is, are coming in to the theme. Uh, but always, I think we need to to uh, have clear what is our specific issue. Well, I was very I, happy. I was very happy with. Uh, um, sorry, I forgot your name. The of the ensemble Anachronia, um, telling that he that that they're always aiming for a cheerful and happy performance. Because one side of sustainability is also, of course, uh, thinking uh, and rethinking how about uh, audience development. And I think uh, a cheerful and happy performance, or at least an impact on your audience, is is uh, key to that. And um, and and I think it has gained a, a, a lot of um, uh, importance over the over the last couple of years. Um, but. I think uh, as an ensemble, you also have to think about how you um, increase that impact. And I also see that like like in sports or in the pop uh, sector, you see like there are heroes built uh, within the scene and there is like a storytelling around those um, um, pop artists and, and sports uh, men and women. And um, I think this this uh, building a story uh, also about the performance is uh, is one thing to to help um, also build your your the community around your ensemble and around uh, and and also for us as uh, promoters or, um, um, venues or festivals. Um, I would be very keen to have more uh, information also about about the the who is behind the performer. Um, so the, the point of view as, a, as, a, as an audience, I think is also very important to, well, to look at the future. What do they want? And um, do we have an impact on them still? And how? Do we, Albert or Peter, do we have an impact and, and how do we do it? That goes to the, in a part, I think, to the, the early discussion about the audience, um, the audience issue that I, of course, wasn't part of, so I don't want to repeat it without knowing I'm repeating it. But um, yeah, one, one thing I'll say about, about that is that we are very good at, at having an impact on the audience we have, uh, because those people know what, what it could be. Um, any person will be ready to feel an impact, but we just need to reach them, of course. And um, how do you how do you explain um, in words? How do you explain in words what what the impact of a concert will be? And that is that is what we're struggling with as organizers. I think uh, we make our brochures. There's little text in it. Um, who are they aimed at? They're aimed at our own at our own audience, of course. And does that give a preview of the impact? Um, I don't know. I don't know. But so we, we may actually need the help of the ensembles to um, to build that to build that impact with us because yeah we 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 just have our own feeble feeble text text based things mostly or a festival like Wonderfield which just sells tickets basically based on a vibe because um, oh yeah true yeah. yes. You sell tickets. You don't sell tickets because of the program. Nobody knows what the program is. Uh, people just want to be there. Yeah, we just sell the experience. That's true, and 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 it works. 
uh, and I was also triggered. Um, may I drop something else? Because I was also very triggered by um, uh, one of the ensembles, and I just look it up. Um, I um, it's Ensemble Litorina uh, by uh, with uh, Ian Hall just spoke to us. I was very in, uh, uh, triggered by. Um, that you wrote one of our most important concerns has been the sustainability of a musical career um, in time of fierce competition and the disease of perfectionism and i was also wondering because perfectionism uh, is all about what we think is quality um and what we um and i was I, i'm very interested in in this because I see that uh, around or with my festival Wonderfield, I also see that shifting a little bit. Uh, I think we always thought, or I always thought that the highest quality was like the perfect, um, yeah, the faultless, perfect uh, performance. Um, um, in the Netherlands, we would say uh, one in the Concertgebouw, <laughs> like the perfect acoustics, um, faultless and and exactly as it is meant to sound uh, or something. I don't know. Uh, and I feel I, I'm not really interested in that kind of quality. Um, of course, uh, there should be like a basic um <laughs> level of quality um but may maybe i can also quote martin engeltjes who also said something about this uh, a couple of years ago to a dutch newspaper um and he was also a little frustrated about um perfection uh and he said classical music must be taken out of the norm of perfection uh, the experience is also important. As classical musicians, we are so afraid to make mistakes. And in pop music, you don't hear anyone about perfection. The only thing that matters in pop is whether the audience has really felt it. In the end, that is what you want to achieve with music. And for me, uh, uh, organizing Wonderfeel, knowing that the audience is not really interested in the program, but more in this experience, uh, I really, I'm, I'm looking... I'm searching, scouting for ensembles um, that gave me that give me that exact feeling of a thrill, of energy, of this happy uh, performance, um, or or a very deep impact, emotions. And uh, for me, it's very diff It's a very different type of quality than I think um, uh, the the. Um, we were used to think of uh, quality, but maybe Peter and Albert think different about this or exactly the same. And we have no discussion at all. Um, I, I think quality is, is, is <laughs> yeah, it's all again, uh, a question of definition. I mean, what are you thinking is a sustainability? What is your world? What is your, image of of the world and and then then you will of course act uh, in a, in a specific way um, because you are thinking it is that uh, and me i'm thinking different maybe and albert and so so it, it will be for sure a very rich uh, uh, but but not so defined uh, version of, of of quality we we will meet uh, all the time but I, I would like to um, go a little step back to, to the, the question of impact, because I think it was uh, the, the first question of, of Jorge. Um, I think uh, uh, an important word is communication, uh, because we, we, we are in a triangle. We have the, the, the arrangers and the musicians and, and the audience, and we are interacting all the time. Um, so could it be a good idea to 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 have all this uh, the, the positive aspects of the impact of uh, classical early music uh, in our communication to the audience and and I mean from from the ensembles you can communicate we are playing uh, Monteverdi or Carissimo or whatever and and we are also doing that in this way because and then. Uh, the, we as arrangers, we, we are really like, mm, interesting. They are, they are thinking these people, and they are good too. 
So we will invite them and then we, we will take this information and we will put it in our communication to the audience and the audience will say, wow, these arrangers are thinking about these things and they are inviting young ensembles uh, that thought about it. And then, oh, but we, we, we want to, to also to contribute going to this concert. So, so this, this could be, a, you know, a positive chain of communication that is very useful, I would say. Can I uh, t t change tack a little bit and, and speak about the role of programmers? Um, uh, I mean, all the good points aside, but I'll, I'll, I'll make this point. Because last week I got a proposal from someone that um, was trying to tell a story. And um, the story was good on paper. And then he presented a program. Um, and there were like points of the story, but the music he would present was actually very generic. So it was basically a highlights of what a tenor can do in the, let's say, Rossini field. Great, lovely, uh, good singer, no doubt. Um, but if you just see the pieces, the story wouldn't make sense. What I immediately thought was, okay, I need to call this person and think like, cool, you want to do that, but your program is actually not communicative. Um, it is not engaging in itself it's just doing what you can it's pieces you probably learned in conservatoire fantastic uh, but we need to to up it we need you to, to do some more research that is perhaps the furthest i've gone with ensembles honestly and it it excites me immensely just to to I'm not sure how open the ensembles are. I know ensembles who are absolutely not open to this, that programmers mess with their programs. But I was just very like turned on suddenly like, oh, but we can actually tell a story that is not just like, it doesn't tick two boxes. It can actually tick four boxes because I can add layers onto it, which will make it more interesting, which will make it make sense to even the most annoying thinkers. And I can be very negative about programs. Like, yeah. Oh, stupid, boring, well, seen it before. And you can actually move on if you allow programmers to work with you, but programmers don't, don't usually do that. They just buy things out of a catalog. Um, so um, let's tickle each other. I think if we tickle each other and just really be in touch and build a program that is that is very you, that is very of the ensemble and not just like three Telemann sonatas, but because, I mean, lovely, but where's the story there? So. Maybe that's my, uh, let's tickle each other. That's good too, touching. touching. If I can add uh, to that uh, shortly. Um, this year with Wonderfeel, we asked um, all the ensembles who were performing um, to put a, a, um, a piece by a female composer on its program. Um, and we had a discussion about this, Jorge, I remember, uh, because it wasn't very easy for you to do that um in the early music scene but um i was very happy that all the ensembles we called uh, or were in touch with on uh, email were very positive about this and where it was possible they uh, changed their program and put uh, a piece by a female composer on the program and um it inspired me as well very much because if you don't ask um it's simply not happening uh and if you do ask everybody was very enthusiastic about it um, I think a, a couple of weeks ago, I got a program proposal by a, a string quartet, and there were actually eight program proposals, and I um, and it was all by uh, by the the names you all know, uh, all male uh, composers. Um, and I said, uh, okay, I see eight proposals. Where are the female composers in your programs? And um, is that on purpose that you didn't? add uh, female composers to your proposals. And, and they replied and said, no, it was not on purpose. I said, and I replied, well, that might be the problem. Uh, so uh, I really, uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to new proposals with some female composers in it as well. Um, I, I think this is, uh, I, I, I hope it matches your line, Albert, but I agree that as, um, curators we also have uh, the task to well, communicate about programs and um, see how we can make this also more inclusive and diverse and and so future proof i would say uh, tamara that uh, in in our case in, in stockholm we uh, well, myself i'm always always discussing the the content of of uh, any program with 
every uh, ensemble or artist because uh, I, I think it, it is for different reasons, of course, because I, uh, our festival is built up as, as a very, let's say, uh, palette, uh, uh, colors, contrasts, and, uh, uh, and experiences and of different um, uh, yeah, shapes. So uh, I, I, we are not working with themes at all, so that there's a big possibility to include and to, to change and to, to make things. Uh, and this is a discussion uh, in, in, we are, uh, in which we are involving, of course, the artists uh, in, in, a, in the beginning of, of, our, of our process. Uh, so uh, so I have, I'm very familiar with this, this way of, of working. And, and I think the result is, is much, much better because you know what, how to, in, to communicate with, with your audience and you know what the, the, the artist is offering. Uh, and and if you can kind of merge that in a very colorful and nice way, that, then you and you have in, in this dialogue in this communication you have also other possibilities to add for, for added values in terms of sustainability, for instance. That's for sure. We have a lot of possibilities. Uh, I Tama before said that it we have a lot of communicative power and and we have the the challenge to be re relevant sometimes uh maybe we don't find as it was our case in the renaissance music uh name women names on the pieces uh or women actor actors but we can put the focus on the on the women situation on the sustainability situation or diverse situation we try we have also heard you talking about quality fun uh engaging the audience and communication and i have heard two of the ensembles of the echoes festival already and they for sure they got it they took the the attention of the of the audience and they uh, they get good and good went uh, into the feelings of them and and i'm sure trio Aido and liturina uh, will also uh, achieve that they will tell a story and they will let people feel engaged to that but they also have ideas they and they are here to express them uh, so we will start to to listen to them we'll start with friderike from the ledone concert uh, friderike good morning buenos dias buenos dias um Good morning, uh, everyone. Thank you so much for all the interesting things you said. I think uh, it's very inspiring also for all our ensemble because we really try to be sustainable in so many ways. Uh, we have we, we built this identity about when we go to concert halls, we ask for vegetarian food, things like this. We will always bring our own water bottles. So these really small things that we can do as an ensemble, we try to do. Also going to rehearsals with public transport, things like this are, are very important to us. And we really try to also involve it in our identity of who we are. I think diversity is also a very uh, interesting topic. We are, of course, uh, for, for females in our ensemble, try to be international, try to compensate that in our board of our organization. And yes, I think it's super interesting when you say like, okay, one artistic, what Tamar was saying, like one artistic director, yeah, they maybe have lots of power. They don't see everything. They don't see what, what's going on. And I think in our ensemble, we also had the same issue, like, okay, sustainability. We want to create this really sustainable organization. Let's not build it around one ego, around one person. Let's do it in a different way. Because we see in Flanders, in the early music sector, that often these ensembles are built around this one very important person with all the artistic ideas is also the face so with Deledone we try to do like this equal uh, artistic leadership and we're all the face we're all Deledone concert where uh, this is really our identity also I think sustainability yes it's in the repertoire of early music of course we play this beautiful repertoire that has been there for years that has been in concerts programmers all over again and again but i also think that maybe it's also very important to also innovative uh innovate in the way that you perform this kind of music that you don't always repeat the same things because it is about sustainability but it is also about impacting this audience like how can you also impact the audience but with the same repertoire and i think we should really 
think critical of this. Okay, how as an early music ensemble, can we do this? How can we perform? How can we impact the audience with this beautiful repertoire, but still have these contemporary ideas, still bring this with all the issues that are going on in the world with right now, we have the hashtag me too. We have all these things that are going on. How can we also represent this in our identity and the way that we perform to the audience and to be closer to the audience than musicians were before to really connect with them, communicate as well, listen to them. And uh, right now we have a program planned in, uh, I think Albert will know this, uh, Museum Vlezas in Antwerp with uh, Timothy de Papa. And we really worked with him, by the way, with Cornel van Niste, and we communicate with this programmer, what do you want? How can we perform this, this new program in, in this beautiful location, but also bring the program to other locations. So we don't just create one program, perform it two times maybe, and then just put it in a closet and never think of it. But how can we just do one project and keep on going to different locations? I don't think it's an issue to uh, do different programs because we also do live electronics, but it just has to be sustainable in the way that you perform it, that you don't create something and then just leave it, leave it somewhere, but that you can also reinvent programs that you create. I also think that's uh, a nice thing to think about, but maybe I'm uh, talking a lot. Um, and also we are really pushing forward to uh, work with female composers because in early music, yes, there actually has to be more research done to really discover who are the secret um, female composers because we know that Anonymous uh, wrote a lot of music uh, in early music. Maybe Anonymous was sometimes a woman. We don't know these kind of things. Maybe more research can be done about this, but we also work with uh, modern female composers who are now living and we know who they are. <laughs> so that's also uh, something that we really work on. I think I will stop talking now and give the mic to someone else. <laughs> Thank you, Federica. That was really inspiring. Um, it was very nice to, to listen to you. We see you have a lot of ideas and you have thought a lot about that. And that's also one of the reasons why you are here, uh, actually, uh, for, for being part of this Eco Festival, this Eco for the application. We asked the, the musicians to, to answer already what they think and if they think about these topics. We think, as you said also, Federica, yesterday in the, in the conference, that we as musicians, we are not only uh, artists or not only musicians, players, singers, but we are also social agents and we have something to give to the world. So it's very nice that we can hear you, listen to your ideas now. And we go to listen now to the ideas of uh, uh, Ian Hill um, from Liturina Ensemble. Buenos dias. So Litorina, um, as an ensemble, likes to play its own little part in environmental issues. So we're considerate of things like recycling, reusing, and transport as well. The next year that we're going to be doing a small tour of north of England and Scotland. And this appeals both on an environmental level and also it gives us the opportunity to perhaps go to places that we wouldn't normally go in rural, rural settings. Um, but I think when we were posed the question about sustainability, the main thing that came to mind was social sustainability and being perhaps a bit selfish, thinking of ways so that we can sustain our own career, um, the, career the, um, the career of the ensemble, and also employing other people around us, bringing in other musicians, giving opportunities to them, work, um, people like film crews, um, administrators. So that's one way that we looked at it. I, I also wanted to touch on that, that quote, um, from our passage about the disease of perfection. Um, whilst we value quality, that, that, that was kind of talking about the fact that when we've had our most successful concerts, it's when we've been taking risks. It's when we've been taking risks with ornamentation, timing, or almost trying to trip each other up. Um, so I think that by doing that and creating interaction with the audience, that can be a way to sustain our career well into the future. Thank you, Ian. We have also another group from uh, Spain, from Valencia, based in Valencia. And we have Jeremy Nastasi from Iberauri, who is going to share his ideas. <clears throat> Hello, and thank you very much. 
for sharing your ideas and um, and thank you also from my colleagues. Um, well, as a member of Iberauri, um, I wanted to to express our which is that our our modus operandi, so our way to uh, to express uh, ourselves. So um, uh, with Iberauri, we we try actually our our the ensemble is based on telling uh, stories actually, and uh, when we do a concert. Uh, we always uh, tell the story of Marithapolos. It's our main program. And Marithapolos is a female character, uh, which was a um, young Spanish girl that was actually, a, well, yes, a prostitute uh, that has a dream, has the dream to become a great dancer, a great singer, um, a showgirl, actually. She wants to just to to share his her heart and, and well, I won't tell all the story, so. <laughs> but um, so apart from this, uh, that has, that is our way to communicate. I want all, all, only to say that, um, well, we really supported the use of, uh, of course, trains and every 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 time we can, we don't take the plane. But if I if I can share two points uh, that for me are very important is that. Uh, I'm from Italy and I've been living in France for a lot of years. And I can say that there are a lot of festivals that are quite difficult to, to get in there and to, and to difficult access. So a lot of time we have, we're quite obliged, obliged? obliged. Yes, obliged, thank you. <laughs> to take the car and to take a lot of uh, transports that have, has a lot of CO2 impact and uh, this is very complicated, and um, as a thorough player, my colleagues can, can certainly know that uh, traveling by train is uh, a lot of time very complicated because there are a lot of restrictions. Uh, Thorough is a really big instrument, and it doesn't become uh, economically uh, sustainable actually because uh, controllers does a lot of um, uh, multas. Um, a lot of fees, yes, a lot of, yeah. So the only way to travel a lot of time is to take the plane, to to take the, our own car, even to do 2,000 kilometers. It already happened to me. Uh, last year, I went to a festival from Milano to, to the Pyrenees, to the mountains in, in Spain, and I, I spent like 12 hours in, in a car with uh, three instruments, and it was, wow, well, that's that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Jorge, can I react on this? Uh, if you may Jorge? wait uh, for for two minutes, we we'll listen to Trio Aido, and then you go directly to talk to Jeremy. It's fine. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. We know traveling and giving your movie with your theorba <laughs> should be to be hard we have working been working here with for example with volvo on on how to compensate also the the impact and that's something that we can talk maybe uh, also later and i'm sure tama uh, is is longing to to answer you but before we are going to listen to trio aido and their ideas trio aido good morning good morning um yes we are two triple players as well, so this is a really <laughs> big problem for us as well. Um, we can talk about more later. But um, just to present our ideas and also to answer one of the questions I think that Tamar was asking about the intervention. So I think, um, well, of course, sustainability. Well, thank you so much for your all your ideas about sustainability. It can really spread to all kinds of topics. But just to focus for now on ecological points, we had two ideas and as a trio Aido, it would really be to just simply use poems and the lyrics. The poems and lyrics of this time, Renaissance and Baroque, they are just full of metaphors, which is a rather foreign idea in uh, today in the 21st century. But for example, a song that is um, seemingly speaking about the nature, the beauty of the nature, is actually a love song that is dedicated to um, the lover, praising the beauty of the lover. And uh, we can use these music, for example, to um, show our appreciation and encourage the care for our mother nature. Another one was, and uh, what we have done is to um, 
there are many, many compositions that is about calamities that are caused by nature, storms, earthquakes, floods, fire, which is absolutely relevant today. And uh, last year, last summer, we also did a performance which was called Never Weather Beaten, which is taken from a piece written by Thomas Campion, who is contemporary to Shakespeare. And um, we combined it with composition made on Shakespeare's Tempest. Um, and we um, did a charity concert. We three, all of us are, um, are connected to Japan, the members of our ensemble are connected to Japan in some way. And last summer, there was a big flood in a prefecture of Kumamoto. So we did a charity concert titled uh, Weather, Never Weather Beaten. And uh, it is, um, as Peter was saying, a very small way. And uh, it's very basic as well, but uh, it is uh, still nevertheless a way to show our empathy to the most vulnerable and also and there's a ex Japanese expression, um, which means um, every small sand is what constructs a mountain, meaning, well, we shouldn't belittle our each individual tiny strengths that we have. So that is for now. It. Thank you. Thank you, Chalita. That was uh, very inspiring also. And I'm sure the promoters are very inspired to answer to you. So I will give the, the word first to Tama Brücheman. Tama. Sorry for my interruption uh, earlier, but I wanted to uh, react on Jeremy's um, uh, um, well, concerns about uh, his carbon footprint by traveling by plane and, and, and uh, car and um, which I can totally follow because I have these concerns myself too. And I think we all have them. Um, but maybe we should also think about, uh, because you are with a couple of ensemble members, but your audience is with way more. And maybe they can be easily um, persuaded to travel differently by the concert organizer uh, so you can also think about that. Uh, the festival into the Great Wide Open here in the Netherlands, um, they put an eco tax on their tickets uh, of five euro. And if you could prove that you traveled uh, carbon neutral by train or by bicycle or on foot, then you got this five euro back um, when you were at the festival. Uh, which is a way of like um, an incentive or at least uh, triggers people to think about how they come to the festival. Um, there is uh, this new um, sustainable aviation fuel, which is obviously not used uh, a lot yet, but it will. And you can also... Um, uh, invest in this. So it's like green energy. It might not come through uh, into your house, but you can buy a certain amount of, or invest in a certain amount of green fuel uh, and energy and this SAF, this uh, sustainable aviation fuel, and someone else will fly with, um, with this uh, SAF. Um, so there are always uh, uh, different uh, ways of thinking about it, and I should uh, I would suggest that you put an eco tax on your invoices as well. So please, next time if you play somewhere, uh, just tell uh, the organizer, okay, uh, we play for this certain amount, uh, but we have an eco tax uh, on our fee uh, with which we want to offset our carbon footprint, our travels. And there are all kinds of calculators about um, calculating your carbon footprint with your, uh, with your traveling by, by plane or a car or whatever. Uh, and you can just tell them it's, it's about one tree per thousand kilom kilometers of flying. So it costs you like amount X to offset our travel and you can put it uh, to the um, to the concert organizer. I, I would be very willing to pay for this. Thank you very much. Maybe Albert or Peter want also to, to give some ideas, Peter? Um, I, I would ask Tamar, uh, who is planting the tree? For the well, I, I am actually, I have a project, uh, the European Festivals Forest, uh, where we plant trees in Iceland. 
um, and we have uh, we we plant trees uh, in co collaboration with the Icelandic Forestry Service, who has a uh, seventy years on uh, experience by planting trees in Iceland. Um, and I won't go into it deeper, but you can also uh, plant trees through me, <laughs> through the uh, through the forest. Yeah, and we have planted now with uh, the five uh, festivals that are involved with this um, over a hectare of trees by now, so more than two thousand five hundred trees this year. I mean, this, I... this is beautiful, but uh, you also need to see a more direct uh, connection to the thing you are paying more for and and what it could be uh, in in terms of benefit for for the planet i mean the, the, this thing is, is not always completely clear for me uh, so um and and then uh, you, you you spoke a little bit about economy uh, for the rangers and and also for the for the musicians it is is always a, a balance between how how what is your budget and and if you have a still uh, if the, the cost of a train trip is much much higher than than a, than a flight, what will you choose? I mean, this is not our problem. I mean, we need to in this case to discuss it with with, with other sectors really. And 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 uh, I, I I don't know if if uh, governments are are really conscious about that. Uh, on, on the one side, the, they are promoting the, the train traveling, and and uh, and on the other side, you can still fly cheaper with 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 Ryanair. I mean, so it, there's no, there's uh, something is wrong. Yeah, that's horrible, and I think I hope they will uh, change this either to put finally some VAT on flying um, uh, or to make the trains cheaper and, and, and better connected because it's, uh, it's, it's the international trains are, are horrible, especially when you go to Spain, sorry, from, from Amsterdam to Spain, this connection over France is really uh, very difficult. Although the, the Talese and the TGV are very fast, but the, the connections are not really but I hope I'm I'm sure they will work on it. I we have we need to hope for this. Sweden is even worse. Well, of course, there's an historical uh, reason for these strange problems, but that's something we are working on <laughs> here in Spain. I hope it, it not not as much as we as we should. We are also working on the on the trees uh, uh, here in Sierra Spuña in the region of Murcia. But um, what can we do as a musicians? Because we are not in in charge. We can of course put uh, the focus on the transports, but uh, but we cannot build trains <laughs> or or rails. What what, what, in your opinion, Albert, can musicians do uh, for this challenge? And what do you think about what they what they presented here? Well, I think what you can do is um, bring it up. Always, just bring it up. Uh, Tamar is bringing up. I want female composers. Nobody else brings that up so clearly, so consistently. Ensembles we've spoken over the last few years. We said like, what if we did residencies? Uh, what if we stayed longer in one place so we can engage with the local community? And I told the ensemble, well, you have to bring that up any time you do a concert. It, is, it can always be an option. And just remind the organizer that it's an option because people are just like, I just want the concert. And they're like, they don't even think about the possibility. So if you are passionate about um, being on trains, bring it up immediately. M make sure that they know it might be more expensive, but that you insist on being on that train, um, don't fly right there. Just do not. Um, but yeah, there's there there's very cars are not as bad as as cheap flights on Ryanair actually. So uh, I'm not so worried about three T orbos in a car. That's the, we can work with that. Um, but just bring up the topics over and over and over again because I may be aware of it. Uh, Peter and Tama may be aware of it. Many people are just not aware of it. Ex speaking from experience in Rema, people are like, oh yeah, ecology, it's very important. It's like, yeah, but what can you do? And then it's uh, your responsibility as younger, more plugged in people to bring it up, I think. What else, Peter, in your, Peter, in your opinion, can the musicians do? Uh, as I um, said before, uh, communicate, uh, ha have a dialogue with, with, with us. Uh, the, the
the input must come from from both sides or or even from from the audience uh, at the end uh, so it, it must be a, a kind of in, integrate uh, dialogue in between and and of course uh, Concrete things are good. I, I'm always working with concrete ideas and often simple ideas that, that could make a, a bigger impact than, than complicated uh, uh, thoughts that, that really are not reaching uh, to any part. So um, famous composers, yes, uh, train, yes. Uh, a few things then 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 we, we work on this and we see the 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 result and then we, we, we see this is working this is not working what can we do with that so but let's let's concentrate it on on, on a few uh, issues uh, and and uh, develop them can i just say why 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 stop at a few issues why not in all this early music community even in the echoes community there's so many ideas why not do all the things not all of them will think, but just do all the things because we're we we've been holding back for decades of doing things um it's hard i know it's 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 not realistic either but uh just be just be annoying just be super annoying and say no i want to do i want to travel by train i want to do female composer i want to eat vegan i uh, all the things uh, why not well, and there's yeah, no course, escaping. Course. Uh, there's no escaping either to be super annoying because uh, all the countries in Europe has uh, committed themselves to be at least in 2050 net zero. Uh, a, a lot of uh, 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 countries have have uh, committed themselves to 2040 or 2030. So uh, we can't be <laughs> slow anymore. We need to be very active and very annoying. I really like that. Please be annoying. Of course, we need to be annoying. Uh, but what, what I mean when, when you're uh, planning things, you, 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 it's more realistic to focus on a few important things and to, to work on it and then see how are these things changing what we really want to achieve. And if you have, I, I like, I have thousands of ideas, but you cannot work with thousand ideas at the same time. We are, we are not women, may... all of us. It may uh, cost you your artistic budget. You may have to spend artistic budget on things. And that's okay, I think. We don't need to have every single concert. We can do one concert less and then everybody travels by train, for instance, I'm just saying. I think. But um, I think we are so stuck with, this is the way my festival looks like, this is the way my hall runs, this is what my audience wants. And we just, like Tamar said, we, we we have to go there. We have to go there now. I have some comments here in the in the in the table. I will give the word to Talita from uh, Trio Aido. Yes, just a very short remark. Um, not to add, um, not to open a can of worms, but about about, about traveling on the trains. I traveled um, to Latvia and to Denmark with the train, and we always have to use the ferry. And I have this friend who is working as an advisor for United Nations and WHO as transport, ecological transport advisor. And according to him, <laughs> it's, just, it's not as simple as if we avoid aviation, it's okay, because the worst contaminations are being caused by ships. So we, we have to take ferries, and then we really want to take care of what kind of ferry also. Yeah, that's just, I wanted to, maybe, I thought it's maybe good to point out. Thank you. And I Thank also... You. Thank you, Talita. And there's also a reaction from Frederike from the Ledone Consort. Hi, yes, I have a remark and I think Jeremy as well. Okay. I think all these super lovely ideas, I completely agree with. Yeah, we have to be difficult and we have to stand our ground and let's say the, the programmers and the concert halls this, yes, we don't come with play, with a plane, we come by train even more if it's more expensive. But sometimes it's really hard to do as a young musician, mm. as a young ensemble, because often an organization has a certain budget. You, of course, want to pay your musicians 
correctly, you want to be a good and healthy organization. You want to have the fair practices because we're also really with Deledonia trying to do all these things, um, like be fair with everybody. And then if you really stand your ground and you only get this this budget and no transport cost, then you're cutting in your own flesh a bit as a young uh, ensemble. And also you're, you're the programmers. Of course, we want to be programmed. I think everybody at this table wants to be programmed. So we are, are already in a, in a, in a yeah, how do you say it? Uh, dependent uh, position towards you. So if the festival, because uh, the Ledonic concert, yeah, I don't know if you know it, Bos Festival in Kortrijk, uh, they did a really lovely uh, festival with really sustainability and everybody who came by bike had, uh, they got like this bike fixer at the entrance with super cool. And then, yeah, it's it's more, it's, it's way cooler for musicians also to go with it if the organization is already already saying like okay we will support you in this um, maybe Jeremy would like to add something no I, I would share actually everything you said yeah okay yeah. <laughs> and we are arriving to the end of of this Ecos, second Ecos lab uh, but of course uh, sustainability in this world means also sacrifice uh, we cannot uh, Albert said before we cannot, in my, in my opinion, sorry that I give my opinion because I'm the, the moderator, but uh, we, we cannot hold this level uh, if we, because it's not sustainable. Uh, it's, uh, we have to, to search for, for and, and everybody maybe needs to cut a bit of their flesh. For us, it's harder because we are not in a position of power, but uh, that's the point. How, where is the limit? Where is the balance? Uh, and what, can, what is our part as a young ensemble musician that start, what is your part as a promoters in this case? Um, how can we work together for that? Um, Tamar? Well, um, I wanted to add as well, uh, also to Frederic, um, that it is very hard. Um, I think everybody thinks it's very hard. Me too. I find it very hard to to stay focused on what I want and what I think is best for for the environment and the festival. And it's always a friction. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm afraid that it is hard, but we still need to throw a, a, a stone in the pond uh, and we need to keep on doing that. And I think it's our responsibility of uh, uh, Albert, Peter, mine, everyone uh, uh, who is uh, presenting ensembles to look after uh, the young ensembles. I mean, we have this responsibility and we also need to um, keep our colleagues uh, reminding of this. I mean, it's also in our, on our, um, it's also super important for our existence that we keep um, programming the younger ensembles. And I think if you saw the lineup of Wonderfeel, we have uh, a lot of uh, young ensembles on, on our festival because one of the huge, um, advantages of Wonderfeel is that the audience, as said before, is not really interested in the program. So I can take every risk I want. I, ha I have the freedom to program everyone I want because uh, the people are bu buying day tickets and not concert tickets. So there is no risk in programming younger ensembles or ensembles with weird uh, programs, whatever weird is, but risky programs. Um, they consider be risky because at Wonderfeel it's it's a different different vibe of of program. This freedom is very important, and I don't know. I hope uh, other concert organizers feel that freedom. But yeah, there is always friction between getting it uh, the economic and the creation balance. It's it it will be hard. Always. Yes, I think it's always hard indeed. Um, but I, I have also heard you talking, by the way, at ECHO 2022 in Bazaar, and you were also speaking about how Wonderfeel is uh, doing, with, doing things around sustainability, which was really interesting as well. Yes, I think as a musician right now, as young ensembles, the only thing we can actually 
do practically like really concrete is put things on our hospitality rider like vegetarian food this is what we want this is what we demand and no we don't want plastic bottles in our dressing room um, things like this we can of course do and i really by the way love the idea of putting the eco tax on the invoices i think we can of course have uh, give a signal to programmers like okay we we find it's important and then i think it's up to the programmers if they want to go with it or uh, yeah or not, <laughs> actually. So yes, I think in, in, yes, we are. Uh, you're you're more in a power position than we are. But of course, we also have a responsibility of really communicating these things that we find these things important, like on hospitality <laughs> riders, like really communicating through our identity, through who we are. So I think, of course, it's always a, a shared responsibility uh, from everyone in the sector, in every level. And I do think uh, talking about this eco tax on your invoices, I mean, if you're a member of REMA, stick together, uh, convince all the other ensembles to do the same. If if you ha if the, everyone puts an eco tax uh, on, on the invoices, uh, everyone needs to pay it because it's simply, there's no other option. It might be an idea, I don't know. Uh, I, th I think we in you told Tamar about the the the, the way to to make uh, the audience uh, tr trust in in your in your festival and your activities, uh, and uh, we in Stockholm we do the same thing and in twenty uh, but in a different way in uh, twenty years we never repeated an artist we never repeated a, a program, so we um, now people know that that there is quality from the beginning so that they would come to any concert it's a little bit different approach but but it's the same idea that that you can uh, trust on, on the audience and the audience trust to one so so the programming uh, younger ensembles we do that all the time and and there is no difference for us if, if this is a good concert uh, to to with a with a known artist or not known artist is the same thing. They're, they're, they're coming and they're uh, they're working. Okay, uh, but uh, what I want to add only is that it's important to to keep kind of proportionality uh, because we are, as I said in the at the beginning, a, a little sector of 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 music, and and we should not feel guilty. We should be, be happy about what we can add, what we can uh, uh, contribute with to have more sustainability in, in, in our, on our earth, but, but still uh, seeing the, 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 potentially, the potential in the thing, the specific thing we are doing in the music, in the early music, and, and then uh, looking around but not feeling guilty. This is, for me, it's important. It must then in a, in a positive way. Albert Tellerman, what is important for you? Huh. Um, well, of course, lots, lots of things have been said that I can only echo the, the, um, the ecological part, especially our basically practical things and, and sacrifice. But I do want to cycle back to one point that, that we had and that uh, I had a thought about. We spoke about narratives, uh, about storytelling and how that will make your program, your ensemble, your festival relevant. And uh, I feel that we may mistake what that means because we find um, this, this might seem like a completely separate point, but it's like we, uh, we tell a musical story. So we take a story from inside the music, from inside the composer's world, from the lyrics, and we build with that. That's wonderful. That's great. But that doesn't talk to things happening in society. And not every music can talk about everything. Uh, we are a, usually an abstract art, especially when we do music without text, uh, it's, it's harder. But I would invite everybody to uh, stick out from the, from the field, shall we say, um, to develop programs that not only have an internal story, but also an external story to um, link with something you find important with, um, I don't know, with ideas in society, maybe ecology, why not? Um, but to, to, to make it, to really add more layers on that. Um, and if your program doesn't speak to, to something outside of the music, think if you can find a way. And that for me makes it more interesting. You stand out from the crowd. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that's, that's really the future because festivals 
music, art, uh, if we want to say, like it's important for us, for us all. It cannot only be important because it is there. We want to we want to share something like the. Um, I'm sorry, I'm rambling a bit, but the European Festival Association has this idea of a, of a standard, what it means to be a festival, and it's like be a warning sign of climatological change. It's like great. Um, how the F are you going to do that? So um, that's up to us, basically, to make sure that what we present has that extra meaning as well. And I'll end there. Thank you, Albert. Thank you, Peter. And thank you, Tamar. Muchas gracias. Uh, I don't know if some of the ensembles want to have a last minute. Uh, and <laughs> some of them want, but I think uh, yeah, you, you, you can. OK, we have enough for today. Uh, I will ask you, Peter, Tamar, and Albert, to have a golden minute uh, just to close this wonderful um, uh, come, yeah, talk and lab. Thanks for all the, the ideas. Uh, thanks for thanks for the uh, to the ensembles for your participation. I hope uh, we can create new projects, processes, and, uh, and yeah, and and try to to work together uh, as far as we can. Um, for us in Ecos, it's very important that we give space to these conversations, that we give space, of course, to the music, and and also to the. We are in the middle of 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 somewhere. It is very hard to arrive to Sierra Spuña by train. <laughs> um, and we are, yeah, in Sierra Spuña, this uh, early music or this culture is not always as present as we would like. And and I think it's part of the sustainability to to bring the possibility of, of having a, a, a high quality life and, and culture access to, to, to all the places. And it's very nice that you are here. And it's also very nice that you are, uh, I guess, in Belgium, uh, Sweden and, and the Netherlands from your home talking to us. So Tamar, if you want to add the last uh, word, uh, you're invited. The microphone is yours. Well, I just wanted to thank, uh, thank you, um, all the ensembles talking to us. And um, uh, I just wanted to name you uh, all and, and thank you by calling your name. Uh, Ibera Auri della Donna Concert Ensemble Anachronia Litorina Trio Aido. Um, thank you very much. And, and keep on throwing a stone in the pond, please. Thanks. Thank you, Tamar. Uh, Peter? Yes, I will also thank you all, all of these young ensembles expressing their, their opinions and contributing to, to our common dialogue about this uh, very important theme, themes. Uh, and um, I mean, uh, we, we should be aware as, as citizens of this earth uh, that we are, are sharing uh, what we can do and should do uh, in order to survive. And we should also specifically be aware uh, about the power of, of the, the arts of early music that we are uh, the only ones. <laughs> I mean, only we can do that uh, because uh, we have these resources. Uh, so let's use them in the, in the best way. So thank you. Thank you, Peter and um, Albert. Yeah, I also want to thank you and applaud everybody for, for contributing. We're uh, I think we are learning to discuss these things. It is something we didn't know how to do before because we were never really prompted to. And um, events like this uh, is for me still uh, interesting, inspiring. And uh, we're, we're moving away from an era where it was very top down. It was very white and male and slightly older. Um, and yeah, we're, we're going in a different direction and we, uh, some of us need to be dragged there. Some of us are walking in front, uh, but all of us are moving in the direction. So moments like this really help us, I think, to, um, to get there. So thank you for that. So see you on the next uh, Ecos Lab, which will be around diversity. And uh, probably we will, we will continue searching for for ways for ways of experimenting of talking and and of finding uh the answer 
or the way of working together for these challenges of the 21st century. Um, thank you again. Muchas gracias from Sierra Espuña and see you next time. Bye. Bye.